Hello and good morning. Today we're going to go over problem set one, uh, chapter 13 in fluids. And so I'll begin by showing you where in Blackboard to look for this. So you open the uh, directory for the course and you go to content. And so when you go to content, you have a bunch of different directories. And so look for under problem sets. And so you then open uh, the problem set. It'll either show up for you or it will um, download onto your uh, uh, computer and you can just open the file directly, but it's a PDF file. And either way, you get to the problem. So I'm just gonna describe the six problems for you. So the first problem, Stay, and this is problem number five in chapter 13 of the Jan Coley book. So you look at the problems at the end of the chapter, and this is what you will uh, see. So for problem number five, a bottle has a mass of 35.00 grams when empty and 98.44 grams when filled with water. When filled with another fluid, the mass is 89.22 grams. So what is the specific gravity of this other fluid? So the specific gravity is the density in terms of grams per cubic centimeter. Because remember, the density of water in grams per cubic centimeter by definition is one. So uh, we know the volume of the fluids is the same. And so we can figure out the mass, the ratio of the masses of the two fluids, which would give us the densities of the two fluids, the ratio of the densities of the two fluids. And that's how you would solve this problem. Then we move on to uh, problem number 15. So for question A, determine the total force and the absolute pressure on the bottom of a swimming pool, 28.0 meters by 8.5 meters. So those are the horizontal dimensions of the pool, whose uniform depth is 1.8 meters. So that's the vertical dimension of the uh, pool. So what will be uh, the pressure against the side of the pool near the bottom? So that's part B. So for part A, when you're talking total force and absolute pressure, you need to include the air as well. So you figure out the pressure of the water and the air we're going to assume we're at sea level. And so you'll add those two together. And then the total force, you're multiplying that by the uh, area of the pool. Um, so the horizontal area of the pool. So for part B, what will be the pressure against the side of the pool near the bottom? And for a given depth, the pressure is the same in all directions. And so that comes from Pascal's uh, principle. So if you've answered part A, you already know the answer to part B. The next question is number 28. A crane lifts the 16,000 kilogram steel hull of a sunken ship out of the water. Determine A, the tension in the crane's cable when the hull is fully submerged in the water, and B, the tension when the hull is completely out of the water. Part B is simpler to answer. It's simply the weight of the hull. Part A is the weight of the hull minus the buoyant force acting on the hull. So that's the density of the water times G times the volume of the hull. And you have enough information to figure out the volume of the hull. That brings us to number 31. What is the likely identity of a metal? And so again, look at the tables of densities. If a sample has a mass of 63.5 grams when measured in air and an apparent mass of 55.4 grams when submerged in water. So you can figure out the buoyant force from that. And the buoyant force is equal to the density of the water times G times the volume of the metal. So, You can figure out um, the volume of the metal from the buoyant force. And so um, the buoyant force is equal to the weight minus the apparent force when submerged in water. So the mass, or rather the weight, is the mass times gravity. The apparent force, or the apparent weight rather, is the apparent force times gravity. And again, that's from Archimedes' principle, that's rho times g times the volume. 
And so you have enough information from that to figure out the volume of the object. And you already know the mass of the object. So you can figure out the density pretty easily from that. And once you have the density, you can figure out the identity of the metal. That brings us to question 54. Water at a gauge pressure of 3.8 atmosphere at street level flows into an office building at a speed of 0.68 meters per second through a pipe 5.0 meters in diameter. The pipe tapers down to 2.8 centimeters in diameter by the top floor, 18 meters above. So the first thing is the continuity equation applies. The product of area times velocity uh, is going to be constant. So that's one equation. The faucet has been left open. So where the faucet is left open, the pressure it's experiencing is the air pressure. So you know the pressure at the bottom, that's the gauge pressure, and you know the pressure at the top, that's the air pressure. So you're asked to calculate the flow press velocity and gauge pressure in the pipe on the top floor. So you use the continuity equation to figure out the flow velocity. And then you use the Bernoulli equation to figure out the gauge pressure in the pipe on the top floor. So um, actually it's not, you don't assume it's the air pressure. So I made a bit of a mistake there. Do not assume it's the air pressure. So assume no branch pipes that ignore uh, viscosity. So again, uh, you know, just to clarify, uh, because I said something that was confusing, you're going to use the Bernoulli, or rather the continuity equation to figure out the flow velocity. And um, then the Bernoulli equation will only have one unknown, which is the gauge pressure in the pipe on the top floor. And so assume no branch pipes, so the pipes aren't branching out, so it's continuous flow. And viscosity just means that there's nothing uh, slowing the flow down. And then for the last problem, which is figure 13 point 50, uh, fig problem 55. In figure 13-55, take into account the speed of the top surface of the tank and show that the speed of the fluid leaving the opening in the bottom is related to the ratio of you know, A1 and A2, uh, the areas of the opening and of the top surface. And um, H is Y2 minus Y1. So this I will diagram out for you so you can see it. So you have a cylindrical opening. And so this is A, one, if I remember right. Okay, so A2 is the top surface, excuse me. And so you're going to have a small opening here, A1. And so you have uh, water and you have water coming out. And so we're assuming for the sake of argument that because they're both open to the air, that the pressure acting on both is going to be the same. So that's going to simplify the equation a little bit, but you still have the water level at Y2 and the opening at Y1, and there's a distance H between them. And you're going to use the Bernoulli equation to solve, and again, you can assume that the pressure is the same, uh, you know, that the difference in height isn't going to significantly affect the air pressure. So you have uh, the height, and um, so basically you're converting potential energy into kinetic energy with this. And you know also that um, you have uh, the continuity equation applying. So that V2, uh, you know, A2V2 is equal to A1V1. And so you apply that relationship to the Bernoulli equation and you solve for V1 in terms of uh, the remaining variables. And so that's how you're going to solve that particular problem. So uh, from here, what you're going to do is go back to 
uh, Blackboard, go to content. And so I have recitation list. So this is your recitation list for week one. And so you download that, that will show you the, uh, you know, that list will tell you who you're working with and which problems you're going to be working with this week. So it's also the problems for chapter 21, the next chapter we're going to be doing in the book. And um, so try to reach out to your partners. Uh, you should be able to get in, if everybody has a Suffolk email, you should be able to uh, find each other via email easily enough. If you're having difficulty doing that, reach out to me and I will assist you. And if you're having trouble with the problems, you know, solving the problem, reach out to me and assist and I'll help in assisting you. And again, what I'd like to see is by Friday, if one of the members of the group can post a video solution to the problem that you were assigned today and uh, then do this, somebody else in the group can do the same for the other problem that you're going to look at Thursday. If you have any questions about the process, let me know and I will do my best to accommodate you. Okay, thank you very much and I will see you next time.